today I thought I would show you a run through of Michael Clay Thompson's um, language arts curriculum and this is level three. I've done a video covering level one, level two. Um, we just are about finished with level three and we've done a little bit of level four. So um, for anybody that wants to take a peek at level four, I really like to complete the levels before I do a video on them um, just because I feel like you get a better um, overview, I guess. Um, so yeah, so if anybody wants to see level four, I can maybe do it before we're finished with it, just because I know there's not a lot of videos out there, um, which is why I'm making these, because when I went to buy Michael Clay Thompson like four or five years ago, there weren't hardly any videos. I think there was one. And so it made it really difficult. Luckily, I had a friend that used it. So um, if you're not familiar, oh yeah, and here are my son's um, chess pieces. I think it's um, Caesar Augustus and Augusta. So he wanted me to show you the whole board, but it's kind of difficult to pull it out. Pull in and out. So anyways, they are ancient Rome and he's really excited. I forget how many years and then he said it would be a century old. Um, so it was a great yard sale find from his Nana. Okay. So this is language arts. Um, this is, this covers a ton and some of it I didn't know that we would enjoy. Some of it I was, I don't know. I just, this is a lot of components. Um, so I was a little surprised at first, um, but we have really enjoyed it. Um, and I will share some things. I'll, um, share some things that we do enjoy, things that we don't enjoy. And then this year we kind of hit a little bit of a bump with, um, essay voyage. So, We'll talk about that a little bit. So if you're not familiar, he has the poodle level, which is grades one to three, level one, which is the island level, grades three and four, town level is four and five, level three, which is this one, is the voyage level, which is grades five and six, and then level four is the classic literature level, and that's six and seven. And it goes on all the way up to seven levels. So he says you could be done in ninth or 10th grade. Um, for us, we started level one. Um, I think my youngest was in third grade. My oldest was in fifth grade. The curriculum says third to fourth grade, but that it's advanced. So, you know, I think my kids are smart. I don't know that they're advanced. Um, so for us, it was perfect to be able to combine them. And if you've seen some of the other videos that I've done on this, it worked really well to do, um, the island level. And if you want to know why we did it, how we did it, all that, go back and look. So I won't tell you that now, but it worked really well because she was kind of, um, was a little bit easier for her, a little bit difficult for him, but together it was kind of perfect. Um, I have really enjoyed doing these um, together. I could not imagine doing multiple sets, multiple levels with multiple kids at one time. It seems like a lot. Um, is it possible? Yes. Is it um, flawless and easy? Maybe not. Um, so yeah, so don't be, you know, if you have really independent gifted children, then maybe you can just give it to them and then do a lot of it on their own. Um, in my experience, I think there needs to be some guided and I really enjoy doing it with them. And I'll talk about that in a little bit, but especially for the vocabulary, um, and grammar, honestly, I do. Okay. I do enjoy all of it. Um, but I, we have really enjoyed the vocabulary because, um, as we're practicing the words, I feel like I'm learning words like perspicacious, if I even said that right. Um, keen insight. So I am learning words as they're learning words. I'll show you the flashcards um, so that I can get them out of the way. Um, my plan was to do intro, go through the different levels, and then I'm going to do an in close book flip through. Um, but I'll show you the cards just so I can get rid of them. Something that I like about the cards is that on the back it has um, the lesson, the year, and then whether it's Caesar's English one or two. So I now have two packs of these. This is Caesar's English two. So if we're practicing both and they get spilled or a little kid gets in them, which is totally possible, um, and they get intermixed, 
you can tell them apart. You can also um, have them practice, you know, put them in order when you're starting so that they're only practicing the ones that they've, the lesson that they've just done. Um, so anyway, so you got really nice flashcards and then it just has the, yeah, perspicacious, and then Keenan's up. Um, irrevocable, Felicity. So anyways, it has cards on there um, and I think it's really good to practice before Caesars English. Um, I was making flashcards for them to practice. So this was uh, an easy step. Okay, so let me talk about the what you get in a level and then how I typically have bought books in the past and what I would do different. So it comes with a literature component, comes with a poetry component, it comes with a grammar component, and essay component. Oh, sorry. I knew I did that. Okay. And then a um, vocabulary? What is this? Yeah, vocabulary. Sorry. Um, Caesar's English, which is why, if you didn't get it from the beginning, my son was like, you have to use my ancient Roman um, chess set in your piece, in your video. So I asked him if he wanted, he was going to help and like do a span over or a, you know, swipe by so that you couldn't see me and then see the thing and seemed a little complicated. So I said, we'll just put the people in. Um, so anyways, so these are the components. Um, typically you will have a, yeah, a student book and a teacher book for each of the subjects. For level one and two, sometimes I have the teacher's book, sometimes I do not. Um, for this level, when I first bought it, I only bought the teacher's level for Caesar's English, and I'll tell you why later. Um, but as I got into SA, so I buy teacher's version, I don't know if I said that right, I bought teacher's version for all of these, the teacher's manual. And for homeschooling, that is really all you need is the teacher's manual when they're smaller, especially for poetry because it's not got answers in it. Um, I mean, maybe some at the back, but it's not a big deal. And I like, I almost like the teacher's edition better because he'll underline, at, at least in Caesar's English, he'll underline um, the important words or your vocabulary words that you're doing, whereas in the student edition, he does not do that. So sometimes I prefer the teacher's edition. Um, and it has little boxes that is for you that you can discuss with your student. Um, some people use this for tutoring purposes. Some people obviously use it for homeschooling or home educating. Um, I think you could even do this in the summer. We, a lot of times, do poetry in the summer. I think grammar could be fun to do in the summer. Literature would be fun to do in the summer. And poetry would be fun for your student to do in the summer, even if they are public schooled or homeschooled, I think that those could easily be done in the summer just to kind of keep you into a routine. Um, maybe you aren't like us, but for us, we like to do a little bit of school here and there, or we do fun school um, is what we call it sometimes. So if it's a rainy day and we're at home, then we'll kind of do a fun school day. And a lot of times we will do morning time where we'll read and we'll do um, just some different things all together. So, this is good for those times. Um, yeah, so I prefer the teacher's manual. I typically buy the teacher's manual for Caesar's English. I do buy the student edition. Um, for the student edition, I bought the color, the color one, and it is like glossy. I don't know if you can tell from there, but it is very, it's glossy, okay? So somebody I saw online said that these were consumable. Um, I would not call this consumable. Yes, there are activities in it. Um, oops, there. Yeah, so here you've got word search, um, fill in the blank, practice. So, I make copies of this. I think it would be really hard to write in this, and I meant to look up how much the book is, but I feel like it's a pretty good amount um, just to kind of throw away at the end. So if you really wanted to make it consumable, I would at least buy probably the black and white version. And the black and white version may be like the, um, the teacher's version. I don't know if you, again, you can tell I'm gonna do a close-up one, but this is paper. So you could write on that. This you could write on if you have like a pen. 
Um, so anyways, so I bought all the teachers manuals. I was trying to save money and then realized I needed the student version of this. I cannot remember why I think, um, yeah, I think there was just a lot. I was typing it up. There's a lot of practice and things that, um, I don't know how to explain this. So in Caesar's English, it's only four sentences for each chapter, um, which again, I'll show you. It's really hard to just talk about it and then show you. I want to just show you, um, so I apologize. But for the book, it's only four sentences. They can write four sentences easily. Um, for this, we copy if they want to do word search. We don't always do word search. Um, and then these different, there's some in the book. For these different components, um, this we just do together. And honestly, it's pretty hard. Um, again, if your kid is super gifted, then maybe this will be easy for them. But it's difficult for me sometimes. I'm like, now, what is that one? Um, I'm not really sure. So sometimes you're picking antonyms, synonyms, and then fill in the blank. The fill in the blank are a lot easier. Um, but sometimes the relationship ones can be difficult. Um, the analogies. So... Anyways, so we just talk about those typically. I'm trying to find another example. Um, so yeah, so a lot of the book we will just do orally. There is my son especially loves, they have Roman numerals and it's a word problem with Roman numerals. And so we'll read it out loud and he'll work it out and then he'll tell me the answer and I'll look in the answer book and have it. So for this set, I think you can get away with one and two just buying teacher's editions. Um, you can go back and look if you want to be sure. I think there may be a couple that I have. I've said it's good to have two copies, um, but I can't remember offhand. So go and look um, because I don't remember. But one and two, I think you're pretty good to do teacher's manuals if you want to sit on the couch or sit together with your student. Um, for level three, I definitely think these two, you need a student book and a teacher's book. The other ones, you don't really need it. Um, I also do not purchase the practice, the practice set. So there is grammar practice in the grammar book. There is grammar practice in the Caesars English book. And there's some grammar practice in the essay voyage. So for me, I feel like it's kind of overkill. Now I will say for volume four or level four, I bought the whole homeschool packet that comes with teacher and student for all of them and I actually think it was cheaper. I was a little disappointed. Hopefully we'll say I saved money um, with level two and three buying just these books and this, but level four, when I added up individual, what I was gonna get and the homeschool packet, the homeschool packet was cheaper and I was really sad because I was like, oh, all these years I could have had all of the books and it been about the same price. Um, but in the beginning, I didn't know if we were gonna like it. Um, so I did by some of the books used. Um, again, I don't know that I would do that. There are things that I like about the used ones. The, um, the book is kind of sideways instead of up and down. So that was nice to do on the couch with my student. And it is more, re it's more um, reading, I guess, and discussing. Whereas here, you are starting to write more. Um, poetry we can do on the couch. That's why I think it's a good summer. This we can do on the couch, and I've done grammar on the couch. But once you get into these two, you really need to be at a table and you need to be sitting and writing. And grammar, you do need to write. Poetry, occasionally you'll write, but like I said, these three you can kind of get away with. Um, so yeah, so those are the different components. Something else that I don't love is that I feel like they're constantly revising or editing books and so the covers of them change. I even heard someone say that they thought the homeschool version versus the public school version or the like class version that you can get, maybe the covers were different because sometimes I've seen different covers but it looks new so I'm not for sure. Um, so I did check today and Caesars English, they are on edition four for the teachers edition um, but it says it's compatible. So this is, this is edition three. Um, and it is still compatible with edition three of the student book. Um, this doesn't even say what edition it is. So, oh, 
Um, yeah, I don't know. So I did have a friend, she said that it's printed, like this one was printed May 2018. So it does say inside of them when they're printed. So sometimes I think it's just a new printing, September 2020. And I bought these the same time and they're printed two years apart. So I don't know, I don't love that. I don't like um, constantly feeling like, man, I don't have the best books because they've done another one, which is maybe why they do that. I know that, um, I won't name drop, but some curriculums I think kind of want to, they realize people are buying used or some are buying new and so it's not really necessary to always buy the new from the company. So I think obviously it's a business, so they want to sell more, so they'll make it bigger and better. Um, and sometimes it is bigger and better, and sometimes it's just trying to sell curriculum. Um, so if at all possible, save money. Um, you can maybe just buy the teacher's edition and then buy the two student books. Um, but I would add it all up just to make sure, because like I said, for four, it was cheaper. Um, so I started out with level one, buying some used, some new. Level two, I bought all new, only teacher's editions, maybe one student book, and then level three you just saw, and level four I bought all new. Um, so yeah, so look at your budget, see what you think. But I think for this many books, um, it's typically a good price. So yeah, I think that's the only thing that I do not like um, would be that the editions change. This is also not faith-based. Um, but I will say, even though it's not faith-based, I do feel like it's very truth-based, very moralistic, um, good stuff. But I have, um, I have kind of wondered if that's maybe a negative thing. Um, I'm not somebody that wants every single subject to, um, bring in Christianity or Jesus, but, um, I think it is good when you can do that. So I just reviewed our science curriculum. Um, that we're doing this year, or my son's doing Beautiful Feet, um, History of Science. So plug, you can go watch that one. Um, that is a faith-based curriculum, and it has been um, really good, I think, that it's faith-based. Um, so I do like that, and I do think it's silly sometimes when everything is so faith-based. And faith-based. My husband was joking, you know, with a math curriculum and being like, there are 12 loves of fish, and you know, three of whatever and Jesus multiplies them or three loaves and two fish. Um, so yeah, that's a bit overkill, but I do think, um, that, you know, God teaches us. And so it's good to learn from that side. So, um, I do think it is good, but it is not <clears throat> faith-based, but it is still very moralistic and good. And so I think it's fun. Um, but yeah, those are the two things that I don't love about it. And we have started to struggle at, um, writing with level three. So that was something that I was going to go back and tell you, um, which I think I'll just tell you at the end. But if you're curious, I'll tell you what grade levels we did this at. Um, and we did, we've had it about four years and we're just finishing level three because we took a break in between um, last year and this year to do some IEW um, for writing because the writing curriculum here, I think is really good if you're an older student. My daughter was in sixth or seventh grade and she was doing okay with it, um, but my son really needed um, rules. He really needed you to just write out some rules, tell him what to do and how to write. Um, so we have not finished. That's the only thing we've not finished is, um, essay voyage. I think we got halfway through and again, I think it was okay with my daughter. We may go back and finish it. Um, but she, she actually did IW and then we went ahead and did level, um, for grammar with her this year. So we have done a little bit of that, but my son has not finished. Um, so neither of them have finished the writing. So anyways, hope that's not confusing, but, um, talking with my other friend, she said she's seen lots of people who maybe use Michael Clay Thompson up until level three. Um, and then maybe they're not as keen on the writing or they start to only use certain components. Um, I think I really like the different components. And so even if we don't 
do all of the components in one year, like this year, we have finished uh, Caesar's English 2 and Poetry. I don't think that's it. Um, this end of the year. So I think that it's just good, even though it's been four years and we've done three levels, I think it's great because you can do it at your pace and you can do the parts that you want, but I still I still find myself wanting to do all of the parts. Um, but again, if you can't get them all in in one year, then you can always um, just pick and choose what you want or do a little bit here and a little bit there as your student is ready for it. So now let's take a look inside the book and see what you think. Okay, now, now you're over my shoulder, so let's see if this works. Um, I will tell you, I think in the description, I'll write out the levels that we did and what grades we did, just because that can get confusing. Um, I think that's the only thing that I really didn't touch on. It's already pretty long, um, but that's kind of how walkthroughs are. So with the search trilogy, um, he has general comments, vocabulary pre-study, which I think obviously is good before you get into the books. We last year did Treasure Island. Um, both the kids independently read Call of the Wild. And then next year, um, we are going to work on Invisible Man. Treasure Island took us a long time. Um, it is a pretty big book, and my husband did it as a read aloud with us in the afternoon. Um, or whenever we have free time. I do like to purchase his books typically because he throws in the stuff that you're learning into the book. Um, so yeah, so I think that's really good. And he points out some really neat things. It made me really appreciate, um, Robert Louis Stevenson and just his poetic technique, even in a novel. Um, and again, I, it's not something that I would typically learn or know. So, um, so I thought that was good. Um, so next year, the Shadow Trilogy is what's recommended for, um, Abram. But for me, the Shadow, the Shadow Trilogy, um, is a little bit, I mean, it's a Shadow Trilogy, but I feel like it's for older books. Um, it's the Murders and the Room Morgue, the Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and the Hound of Baskerville. So, for me, I felt like for Abram, I would rather him wait, and me and Anna are going to read those next year for her freshman year, um, along with some other books. But So, here again, he's pulling out sentences just from there. He's diagramming them. It's the stuff that we're discussing. I love that he has vocabulary at the bottom. So, even though these books, we have a copy of, I think, both of these, actually, but um, it was good to just buy it in the set. And um, I love his comments on them. I didn't buy all of them with the second level. Um, if you don't have the Med Trilogy, you need the Med Trilogy from uh, level one. Everybody, all the kids love it. Um, grammar Voyage. I love how he does grammar. I feel like he makes it so easy, which is why we enjoy it. Sometimes I'm a little worried, like, oh, maybe they're not getting it. Um, but both of my... Older kids who've went through this did um, language lessons for the well-trained mind, so I feel like they got a good foundation, um, but it got to where it was very um, well, mundane, maybe, with my second. My first finished, my second did not. He got to where he hated it, and so this, um, this helped save us. Um, and so, anyways, I love the way that he talks about it. Every year, he reviews... So, level one, he does diagram sentences, a little odd, um, but I think it's good. Parts of speech, parts of the sentence, phrases, clauses. Again, I feel like I've learned a lot from it. Um, and just the way um, it makes sense to diagram a sentence that way. And I'm not going to show you how he diagrams a sentence if somebody, like, really wants to know. Um, or you have specific questions, please let me know, and I would love to make a video um, that will help you if possible, because there aren't a lot of videos out there. And sometimes if you don't know someone that has the curriculum, um, I would like to, you know, know beforehand. Also, this version, um, has audios with it, according to, I think, this scanner. Um, Caesars English has scanners on the page, which I love, and I just use for my phone. 
Um, this though, I forget, I put audio and then somewhere I marked like how to get it, but I don't remember how to get it at the moment. So anyways, here are all the pages. Um, very pretty, colorful, and he goes through. And then this is why you need a student book for, oh yeah, see my honest, apparently I did it though. Yeah, I did it without buying a student book for this, but I don't know why I decided not to um, buy a student book, but see how it has this. So there are quizzes that you can take throughout and my kids did it. I just would type them because it was like, you know, only a couple of quizzes, but in Essay Voyage, there are lots of them. Oh, I forgot this. So we did this so long ago. Um, John Silver and the Vague Abstraction. Um, so anyways, they really loved it. It was a pirate theme that goes along um, with Treasure Island. So it was perfect that we read Treasure Island last year. We did Grammar Voyage last year. Um, and I feel like the way that he recommends doing it is you do grammar first, and then you can start on um, Caesar's English or poetry, and then you work on your essay voyage. So we had gotten, you know, maybe a third or two thirds of the way, not two thirds, maybe halfway through before we started essay voyage. So it was kind of later that we realized, oh, this is kind of rough. Um, student edition is, the book is so big, so they separate it into two, so it's not as cumbersome. This is part one. Again, um, the parts that I just have my students, they copy this on a piece of paper and they get to where um, this only has them do the first level. Um, if you don't know what I mean, if you've never seen it, he has you break up a sentence into the parts of the speech, parts of the sentence, phrases, if there are phrases, and then clauses. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like in this one because we are... I think it has all four. We just did this one recently. Oh, this isn't the teacher's book. Okay, but it has the example here. So see here, it has all four levels. And then you have to put, I even like how he does this, independent, independent, um, compound declarative sentence. So anyways, he doesn't teach a lot on declarative, imperative, interrogative, and exclamatory, but because of our past grammar, um, they're familiar with it, but I don't know if you can tell, but these are shiny pages, so I would not write in them. I just copy the pages that we want, and there's just so much here that um, we just don't do all of it. It even has, um, I'll go through and show you one lesson. It even has, so there are 20, sorry, I didn't tell you this, grammar. I showed you the table of contents. You saw the like four parts that it is, but in Caesar's English, there are 20 lessons. And so a lesson is about a week. Um, you'll do stems, review, which I like from Caesar's English, breaks up the stems, um, and then you have the activity pages. So again, sometimes we do all of these, sometimes we don't. It just depends on the week and what we're doing. Here is an essay practice. So again, when, once we're doing essay voyage and this, I just don't feel like it's necessary to do this. But again, if you're someone who only wants to do Caesar's English, you are practicing grammar and essays with this writing curriculum. I mean, honestly, you could just buy this and grammar and call it a day. Um, but maybe that's just me, but I like to make things simple. Um, Caesar's math. This was what I was talking about. So I would read this to my son, hide this, and then he would give me the answer at the end. So again, this is why I needed a student book because I couldn't even copy this. It's already filled in with all of the answers. And I just, I didn't realize that, um, because no one did a video to show me. So here you go. You are welcome if that's what you want to buy. And here's the QR codes I was talking about. You can scan and he'll read it. So that's kind of nice because a lot of this I am reading out loud, even though my students were, um, what grade were they when we did this last year? So they were in fifth and sixth grade. I, or no, sorry. They were in fifth and seventh grade. I still read a lot of this just for, um, correct pronunciation and they do have, um, some of the words, like a pronunciation guide, which I do like. They have not had that in the previous books. Um, I'm going to be honest, some of the words I needed um, a pronunciation guide, so that was helpful. 
this was what I was going to tell you about. So I asked my son, do you still like Michael Clay Thompson? Um, he does not like it as good as levels one and two because they were so fun and it couldn't last forever. It's way more academic now. Um, but hopefully I'm saying this right. Um, sesquipedalian stories. So I asked him what he liked and he was like, well, I think he's thinking only about Caesar's English because this is what we're currently doing. We have like, this is our last week in it. Um, so I asked him what he liked about it and he said the sesquipedalian stories and I think it just means kind of like a long-winded story. So Michael Clay Thompson is definitely an author. He is amazing. He uses all of these words and that's what he said. He said he, he writes those sesquipedalian stories and he's able to add in all of our vocabulary words in, in his stories and so we thought that was pretty amazing. Um, so yes, we still like it. Poetry, I lied. Um, we are, that's teacher stuff. So we are like this much from being done and we're just going to do it in the summer. So we did a lot this year. Um, and so we just chose not to do it. We did this part last summer and then we've held off until this part over there. So poetry, we typically did not do other than just reading some poetry. I'm not a poet. I do not rhyme well. I do not write poetry. Um, so I was one of those things that I just didn't really know how to cover. Um, reading the first two levels of this made me feel like, like he does with grammar. Anyone can do grammar. Anyone can do poetry. Um, and it's just, it's really neat. Um, and I think it pairs really nicely with Robert Louis Stevenson because um, he just does so good with poetry. It's amazing. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, check out his video or his nice video, his curriculum. Um, and he, he taught me, he kind of showed, I don't know that I would have caught the poetic technique and the thought that Robert Louis Stevenson took in Treasure Island until someone pointed it out to me and then it was kind of amazing. Okay, so here, a world of poetry, patterns of sound. At this point, you've probably read it since that's all you're looking at. Meter, stanza, figures of speech, poetic grammar, poetry and silence, and then the instructor, instruction, sorry, instructor section. So we really liked this one. It is um, world. So it's kind of science-y, gravity. Um, so anyways, I love how he does the different colors and he helps you to kind of see the patterns. Again, I like the teacher's book because I think the student book has this, but it doesn't have the squares, but I don't have the student book, so. So anyways, and then again with here, you don't have, um, you don't have grammar practice per se or essay practice, but you do practice writing some poetry. Um, so yeah, so that's nice. Okay, the last part. Um, the dreaded essay. So I appreciate this. I think it's awesome. I think it would be great for someone who already knows how to write, but technically with Michael Clay Thompson in level one and two, um, you're kind of just doing sentences and you jump into an essay with an introduction, body, 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 conclusion. So, I mean, this is for fifth grade. So yeah, I mean, by fifth grade, they should write a paragraph, but um, it just seemed a little quick, I think, um, because my daughter was older. Like I said, she did a little bit better with it, but I think this is very interesting. I think it helps you to kind of sharpen um, what you already have, and it shows you that really um, there aren't rules, which we want to say, what? There's not writing rules? Like, you have to have three to five sentences in a paragraph and you have to have, you know, the topic sentence and the clincher and all the things. Um, but he says no. And he gives you lots of really good examples from classic works. Um, I'm just going to leave that there. You can pause it, look at it, and then go back. Um, I forget how far we got, but I feel like we got at least halfway. Um, so yeah, so, and he uses really good examples of writing and he talks about how um, yes, it's good to use those things, but it's not necessary. Um, but I don't know. I still go back and forth. I feel like IEW took out some of the creative process. 
um, to their riding, but it got Abram, got my second riding, you know, five, pa five paragraphs without tears. Um, whereas sometimes there were a couple with this because it just felt a little overwhelming for him. Um, so here again, there's so much repetition, which is good and bad. You can skip what you want. You can take it, make it take a long time. Um, it's really just up to you. Um, but here are your Caesar's English review words. Um, another assignment, but there's lots of these. And then your grammar practice. So this is why I bought a book because I wasn't going to type all of this. Punctuation practice, more practice, then you find the mistakes in this. And then correct paragraph, he's using um, Peter Pan, which was a book that we read the year before. Um, so yeah, so really well done. Um, correct an essay, classic essay. And then these stories we loved. So we still wanted to keep going to read to find out how um, the story was going to end, even though we weren't doing the uh, actual writing. And then at the very end, so you just saw a chapter at the very end, um, you have options for writing prompts and activities. So you just pick a couple of those and go on. So yes, yeah, so you have one writing at the end of each chapter, and there are roughly um, 10 chapters. So that's why... Um, you don't have to start this right at the beginning of the year because if it takes you one to two weeks, you're good. Um, so yeah, I love that about Michael Clay Thompson. Um, I love that it's not like 180 lessons for writing, 180 lessons of poetry. It's just a book. Um, you get it. I love that they are, you know, if, if your day is at the zoo, you can count your day at the zoo and not feel like you've missed out on curriculum. Um, yeah, so I love that if you decide to do a co-op day and that counts as school, you do a zoo day, that counts as school, you do other things that count as school, you don't, at the end of the year, have a ton of curriculum that you have to decide, do we finish it? Do we shove it all, like, at the end? Do I skip some of it? I know a lot of people say, you know, like, the curriculum doesn't own you, you own the curriculum, you use it, which I totally agree, but I still don't like to leave things unfinished. Um, I feel like it's there for a purpose. So I want to try to do it, especially if I'm spending good money to do it. Um, so yeah, so there is an overview. I'll keep you posted. Thank you for watching the video. If you're still here this far, um, I will try to do level four. If you have any questions or something that you want to see or I horribly left something out, let me know um, and I will try to do it. But thank you for checking out the video. Good luck with your kid and choosing which level will be best and appropriate for them.